Hi guys! In this tutorial, I'll teach you how to use the Marvelous Designer 7, Avatar Line Tool and the Flattening Tool. So basically what these tools do is you can use this line tool to draw out lines on your avatar's body and then use the flattening tool to extract patterns based on those lines. Now personally, I do not recommend using this tool because I find it creates very ugly, lumpy patterns and it's very difficult to control their shape. Nonetheless, let's see how to use it, and maybe you can find a better use for it. So if you want to draw lines on the body of your avatar, select this tool here. Let's start by creating a cuff. Now, regardless what kind of pattern you want to create with this tool, you have to still know how to create a basic pattern, and consider how the pattern is going to be sewn together. If you don't create proper lines, which are closed and from which a pattern can be extracted, MD won't be able to extract the pattern. So about this cuff. You can see there's a little grey dot following my cursor. Where you want to start the line, click once, and then you can see this line with another dot appears. And click again where you want to add another point. You can rotate around. Click again to add another point. And then to complete a line, double click. To start another line, just click again and repeat the process. And then double click to close it. Now this tool here is to edit the lines if you want to change the look, you can use that tool to move points. Or if you want to delete lines, you can either click on the line and hit delete on your keyboard or right click and select delete. Now if you try to extrude this shape as a cuff using the flattening tool, you can see when I hover over it, it shows like a blue color of where the pattern would be between the lines. However, this is not a logical pattern because it's completely closed and there's no way to make a pattern like that. If you take a piece of fabric and wrap it around your wrist, there has to be a place where it's sewn together. So if I click on this, you can see it failed to create the pattern. So let's go ahead and redo these lines with an opening where it can be sewn together. And instead of closing this line, I'm going to stop it here and then go straight down for the height of the cuff that I want to make and then go around it again up to here and as you can see if I just make a point here it's going to have a very weird shape so you'd want to create another point along the way and then a point here and then double click to close it and now we've got a logical pattern shape which could be extracted so let's take this flattening tool, so let's click once, it's failed to create pattern, so let's go in with our edit tool, edit line tool and see why it failed. Perhaps there is an opening somewhere along the way. And let's see if just moving the points at teensy a bit is going to make a difference. I don't know why it's not extracting it, let's see if we just adjust it a tiny bit, maybe let Marvelous think about it again. And click on it. And there we go. It's created a pattern. Now this is the lumpiest cuff which I have ever seen. And if we sew it together, just go to the move tool. It's a bit too tight, so let's just extend it out. You can see it's a pretty hideous cuff. Now without using the line tool, it is much faster in my opinion to create things like cuffs. Just take a normal rectangular tool, see the avatar's measurements, 143, click once, let's say width 140, height, let's make that 30, and then let's show the arrangement points instead of the measurements. Click on a point here to wrap it around her hand and then segment sew it together. 
There we got a nice cuff without any lumpiness. It is a bit angular, but that's because of the particle distance. If we lower that, you can see we have a perfect smooth cuff. Not that horrible lumpy thing which we had before. Okay, so let's see what else we could do with this line tool. Maybe we can make some kind of a t-shirt. I'm going to take this avatar line tool and let's make a very straight t-shirt to begin with. So let's say we start here with the shoulder straps, going down to about here. If you hold down shift, you'll see that you can drag a straight line horizontally. So let's do that up to around here. It's a bit hard to tell exactly how to make your clothes symmetric with this, with this tool since you don't see any line measurements. So let's just give our best guess. Okay, and now let's make this strap maybe this width. Hold down shift again to go down straight. And then make a few points with an armhole. Hold down shift to make a straight side seam. And shift to make a straight line along the bottom. I didn't think, don't think it caught. Let's try that again. Click once there, then continue holding down shift. And then go up along this line. And let's see, let's try to have the same width on those lines, those shoulder straps. It's a bit difficult. Mm. Now it's going to be already lumpy there. Oh, we could fix that later. Hold down shift to make a straight line up here. And then close it off by double clicking. So here we've got our front pattern. If you go to the edit tool, you can go ahead and edit it. To make it a bit less lumpy. Something like that maybe. And now let's take the flattening tool, click once, and wait for Marvelous to think about it. And then here we've got some kind of a, well, pretty ugly pattern. You can see it's sort of following the curves of her body here. Her body is sort of curved a bit. It looks straight when we made it with holding down shift against her, but the pattern actually is not straight at all. And you can see here, it's sort of curving strangely. It's much thicker, here it's thinner. It's very difficult to get it to be the same width. So if we wanted to use this ugly pattern for some reason, we'd have to start it going in here with our edit curve tool, start fixing up these curves and getting rid of all the curves, delete all curve points. Same on this line. The same on this line here. And then you can see that complete different lengths, all of these lines, and even the part here is a different length. So we'd have to start going in with our edit pattern tool, start moving it, doing math. I think, I think it was nine millimeters to be 24. Not quite. Move it down by two millimeters and up two, because it's not the same angle. And a lot of work. And also here it's longer on this side than on this side. And here we've got a bit of a curve which is not very nice if you want it to be straight. So you'd have to go in here and delete all curve points. And if you wanted, if for some reason you really liked this side of the pattern, then you could cut it and unwrap it, unfold it. Right click with the split line tool, type in 50%. Or um, if you want to use this point as the center cutting point, then align that one above it delete all of this side and then you've got just that one lumpy side which you can copy and paste or you can unfold or if you want to still edit this side then you can make a symmetric pattern or symmetric with sewing if you want also to have the sewing that you do on this side happen here too and then you can start working on the thing Creating the back pattern using the avatar line tool is going to be even trickier. Let's see if we do it without holding down shift, just by following her body lines.
And there we've got a pretty strange shirt pattern. Now, let's say maybe you like this kind of a design where it looks like an avatar. Besides maybe this part here, which you'd fix up. I'd say the rest looks quite okay to you. Well, let's see what happens if we were to use this. Let's just fix this part up. And let's extract this front piece again. And then sew it together. As you can see, it ends up looking quite different than the lines on the avatar. When we show the lines, the clothes have a complete different drape. Because after all, when you draw the lines, you're drawing them on the avatar's body as though it were a skin-tight conforming clothing item. But this is a dynamic cloth that reacts like real cloth. So the pattern really influences how it hangs, how the fabric drapes. If there's too much fabric, too long or too lumpy, it's gonna look like that in simulation, even though it looked completely different on the avatar's body. You can see here it was straight, but in simulation it's rounded because of the shape of the pattern. So just by looking at the lines, that is very misleading because if you don't know how to make patterns and how, how to draft patterns, how to create them, if you don't understand how the lines here, how the shapes, how the width is going to affect the clothing, then just by drawing lines in the avatar and then hoping that the clothes will look like that, that's a very bad way to model clothes because as you see, they don't end up looking like you think they will. A much better and faster way to model clothes, t-shirts, wristbands, anything really, is just to know how to make the clothes and to create them first from simple shapes, with symmetry, in a proper way, when everything has even lengths and you don't have to work afterwards deleting points, deleting all the curve points, changing things, moving things around to try to get it to look symmetric and straight and proper. Let's look at one last example. Let's say you want to create a curved corset. So let's take the line tool and to delete lines which we have in the avatar, you can select them and hit delete on your keyboard or right click and say delete. So let's take the line tool and let's try to draw out a rounded line. It's a bit difficult, so let's just do our best and then round it down later. If you want to have a symmetric pattern, best you just do one side and then unfold it. Let's take the flattening tool, click once. And since I clicked twice, it gave me two of these patterns, which is funny because it's the same outline on the model, yet you can see these two patterns are so different. This one is all lumpy here, and this one is like that. So even if we went with this one, you can see it's gonna be a lot of work to get it to be straight. You can see the bottom is all eaten up like a mouse chewed into it. And this part here is going to be very difficult to sew another one onto from the back. I can show you what happens if you attempt to do something with this pattern. Segment sew these parts together and these parts. And then simulate. And as you can see, it's not stuck to her body anymore, like when it was flattened, and it looks quite different. In comparison, we wanted to create a corset, and we used a rectangular tool. It would be so much easier to make symmetric patterns, which have a nice smooth bottom, which look professional, 
and not like a mouse just ate up some of it. So that's basically how to use the avatar line tool and the flattening tool. In my opinion, it's best to just draft patterns in the pattern window with symmetry, adjust them as needed, simulate, see the effect, change fabric properties if you need, and create them from the start in a symmetric way without too many extra points and messed up lines and jaggedy edges and things which just take a lot of time to fix up afterwards. So that's my review of the avatar line tool and the flattening tool. Let me know if you find a better use for it. And check out my channel for more Marvelous Designer 7, feature tutorials and other tutorials to do with Marvelous Designer clothes.